Yeah, check out that twisty, twisty, turny road. That's where we're headed. It's right with the right of map and Mr. Splunge. We're heading up to these beautiful colors. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. You know, you never can. I'm just happy the sun's out because... Raining this morning, <laughs> so I'll take it. Yeah, so we got the 750 Nighthawk. What year is this one? Uh, 95. 95. And we're on the SV. Uh, it's an 06, I think? <laughs> or a 04, or something like that. I can't even remember. I'll have to look on the, on the neck. But uh, we're getting ready to hit some twists and some colors. <laughs> See, see what your baffles sound like. Oh, you got to take those baffles. Out. <laughs> uh, I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I, I uh, think you're so <laughs> All right, go for it. I'm gonna follow you. Get you on camera. It's a lot more fun to look at a bike. All right. He's got his mounted on the uh, what's it called on the signal? On the third. Got some nice colors. One of the guys out west, uh, Kermit the Vlog, he talks about the, the colors in the trees and he's like, oh, there's some Suzuki fans and there's some Honda fans. <laughs> Passed two adventure bikes already, some BMWs. Looks like they were 800 to me. Oh, that's a little muddy right there, be careful. So how long you had the bike? Three weeks, awesome. Now you have Pepe, the Suzuki DR350. Does this one have a name yet? Aha! Uh -huh. Angus, nice! I had a, uh, a black Ninja, well it was a Ninja 1100, but it was a GPZ model, so it was a sport touring model. And I named that one Ademar. Because he was the Black Knight off of uh, a knight's tail. That was Ademar. Very nice. Well, this one's a Sami from um, The Legend of Korra. Yeah, it's a, a cartoon on Nickelodeon that I love watching with my kids. A Sami is the. She's like the technical genius. She makes all these cool stuff. She doesn't have any bending powers. She doesn't have any like karate powers type stuff, but she'll make all these cool things to, so she can keep up with everybody else. And since this bike was fuel injected and it's the only fuel, in back, fuel injected bike I have, <laughs> it's like it's the most, it's the most technologically advanced. And Cora is the KTM. So. If you can bend the water and then the the dirt and air and fire yes it is we're on uh what's it called i highway or road or... yeah there's been a lot of watch out it's kind of concerning to see the uh the little puddles on the side oh. My ears are popping. Boy, look at these pretty colors. It is motorcycle time. <laughs> yeah, we ran into some old guy and he was like talking to us and saying that he has a bike and he rides. And I've, I've shown up to motorcycle shops when it was 20 degrees outside before and on my bike. And, one, and uh, the guy, Ken from Ken Cycles, he told me, don't you know the rule? You're not supposed to ride in weather that's cold, that's lower than your age. 
and I've been breaking that rule for quite some time now. <laughs> well, I've found the ways, like of course the windshield is the biggest key, and then I have uh, handlebar muffs that I'll put on my... Yep, if I can keep my hands, my knees, and my neck, I'm okay. But the, uh, the biggest thing is those those muffs are amazing and it's it's better than heated grips in my opinion sometimes the heated grips are they're too hot and they yeah it's like you're touching them but but you're cold on the outside of your hand but the uh the muffs you slip your hands inside i've actually got a video where i talked about it uh somebody called them hippo hands <laughs> Exactly, and that's what I that's where I bought them. They have they were ATVs, but I just use them on the street. And I've been using them for 20 years now. Well, 10. Let's see, how long have we lived here? 15 years. I've been using them 15 years now. Yeah, the insulation honestly doesn't do much, but the, if I can keep the keep the wind off of them, and then I wear you know not thick gloves and that's the thing I, I like to feel the control I don't like to have it all bunched up underneath my palms and stuff boy this is pretty the sun was behind the shade though and my camera has a hard time sometimes when it gets cloudy and doesn't know what to adjust to what is this oh the peak I thought you said the pig and everybody's like parked over here so I was like is there a is there a trail or something that's cool. On the way down. All right, pass it on the land. Very nice. Oh, and the backside's a little wetter. This corner's dry. It's funny how you have to adjust, you know, from the dirt, you almost lean opposite of the bike when you're going into sharp turns, but on a street bike, you're supposed to lean into the turn instead of opposite. So you have to think counter, counterintuitively if you're a dirt person. That's right, a little wet, a little wet, so be careful. Yeah, definitely. Both of us have kids at home we'd like to see. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I'm surprised this one isn't on the map. A little bumpy, but it's drier. Boy, it's almost single lane. <laughs> it's, I'm like hugging the right side. If there's a car coming, we're woo, sharp left. Whoa, that that was slick. I about I didn't go down, but I had to recover. I mean, I I wasn't scared I was gonna crash. It's one of those where the dirt really helps me recover. You know, <laughs> it's okay to have your tires get a little. Boy, look at that. That's just straight down on the other side here. <laughs> sure there are. There's a bunch of guardrails. They're all just wood. Vertical logs. <laughs> I'm on a prior hairpin here. Oh, it's all dry though. Boy, that is sharp. Oh, I thought... I thought you were further back. I was going to get you coming around the corner. <laughs> right side is my weak side. I can always turn sharper to my left than to my right. Sorry, I didn't. We have headsets and I just 
didn't even bother to tell you. <laughs> yeah. And are we... Scott Johnson, near the site of the grave of Francis Dickerson, Scott Johnson died in 1796. While living in Powell Valley, Powell Valley, her first husband, Archibald Scott, and their four children were murdered by Indians. She was taken captive. She was immediately escaped, and after wandering in the rugged mountains of Kentucky for nearly a month, made her way back to Russell County and later married Thomas Johnson.